have the last speaker for the quantum science days. Uh, we have an invited talk from Yangju Chen. Uh, she's from Virginia Tech. Maybe you can start already sharing the screen. Um, the topic is improving variational quantum algorithms with an adaptive technique. Hi. Uh, Thank you. Thanks for organizing this wonderful conference. And thanks for giving me this opportunity to share with you our works on uh, variational quantum algorithms. In particular, we are using this adaptive technique to improve it. So uh, before I start, um, I, I want to apologize that my internet is not very good. So please let me know if I get cut off at some point. Um, and so we know that quantum computing was first proposed to simulate physical or chemical, um, basically quantum systems. So let's try to um, apply quantum computing to one of the common tasks in simulating physical systems, which is finding the ground state energy of a molecule. Um, as we know, in the current quantum processors, the coherence time is limited. For example, if we look at superconducting circuit system, the coherence times are typically uh, hundreds of uh, microseconds. Um, and also, um, there's a limitation on how fast we can operate gates on these processors. For example, again, on uh, superconducting circuit uh, systems, the gate times are typically tens to hundreds of nanoseconds. And this would put a cap to how many gate operations we can meaningfully carry out before the system loses its coherence. And now let's try to use the well-known uh, quantum phase estimation algorithm for this task. Um, as this work uh, shows, um, the number of gates we need for this task scales um, polynomially uh, in the system size n, which is the number of orbitals in this setting. Um, to get an idea of the numbers, let's look at water molecules. For a simplified version, um, where we use 14 spin orbitals, the number of gates we'll need is roughly 10 to the 10th power uh, if we are using a sequential um, circuit. Um, that's a huge number. Even if we can uh, apply some of these gates in parallel, it will be reduced a little bit, but it's still uh, a huge number. And obviously that's not feasible given these limitations on uh, current processors. So this task is not feasible without the help of error correction, but error correction requires long coherence time and large system size. And that's not uh, full, full version of error correction is not available at uh, a current uh, time. So we need um, applications where we can use shorter versions of circuits. And for this purpose, um, hybrid quantum classical algorithms have been proposed, which would uh, offload some of the difficulty to um, classical computer, and we can have uh, shorter quantum circuits that will be useful. Um, of these algorithms, a particularly promising family um, is the variational quantum algorithms. So we have seen in some of the previous talks um, what variational quantum eigensolvers are, but in case uh, some of you missed those talks, I'll quickly uh, recap what it is. Um, so these are uh, proposed to shorten the quantum circuit. And they are based on the variational principle where we know that um, the Hilbert space can be spanned by the energy eigenstates of some particular Hamiltonian, our target Hamiltonian H. And for a generic state, we can write down the energy expectation value. And we know that these will be uh, minimized by the ground state. So we can form an educated guess of um, this ground state and then tune the parameters present to find what it is. So um, this is exactly uh, what variational quantum eigensolver is. Um, the guess wave function or the so-called ansatz is given by a parameterized quantum circuit where the parameters are um, uh, tra translated to the parameters in the uh, gates. Um, and this quantum circuit can be prepared on a processor where we can measure things, for example, we can measure the energy expectation value or its gradient. 
Um, and then these uh, measured outcomes will be uh, fed to a classical computer, uh, which will give us an updated set of uh, variational parameters, which can then be put into this quantum circuit. And then this uh, cycle can be repeated until some sort of um, uh, convergence criteria is reached. Now, the first proposed uh, variational quantum eigensilver is the so-called unitary couple cluster single and double um, VQE. Um, so this was inspired by classical computational chemistry. And the goal was to uh, find the ground state um, or the ground state energy of a molecular Hamiltonian given by the Hubbard Hamiltonian. So these A's are fermionic operators. And the ansatz consists of uh, terms of the same form as we see in the Hamiltonian. So the number of terms in this ansatz or in this wave function will scale uh, polynomially. And it's much more uh, favorably compared to what we see in the fully quantum algorithm in the phase estimation algorithm. Now, uh, because this wave function is given in terms of the fermionic operators, if we would like to um, apply this or prepare this on a quantum processor, we would need to uh, map these fermionic operators to qubit operations. Um, for example, if we use the common jordan wigner transformation, these um, uh, unitary operations will uh, look like the following, where these x, y, z are just uh, Pauli matrices. So you can see they are very complicated. And if you further um, compile these to the native gate sets um, uh, of your device, it's going to look even more complicated, which would be some uh, very deep quantum circuits. So um, as we can see uh, for these variational quantum eigensolvers, the performance will uh, uh, significantly depends on how good the ansatz or the guess wave function is. Um, as we see uh, the UCC uh, SD ansatz um, would lead to these deep quantum circuit, which is not feasible on our current quantum processors, which have um, short coherence times. And similarly, the variational Hamiltonian ansatz is also constructed from terms taken from the problem Hamiltonian. And if you uh, compile it to native gates, again, it leads to deep quantum circuits. There's another set called hardware efficient ansatz. So these are built with um, operations that are native to the device. So they are much more compact and easy to carry out. Um, but because these ansatz are so generic, it doesn't contain information about your problem Hamiltonian. It's usually very hard to optimize these ansatz. It's very hard to find those variational parameters. So that leads me to my outline of this talk. First, I will introduce this adaptive approach, which we use to improve these, um, uh, these variational ansatze, which basically balances between the need for uh, short or compact quantum circuits and the need to build in physical insight into the ansatz. Then I will introduce an alternative update rule, which we use to further improve this um, adaptive technique. And then I will switch gear to the problem of uh, finding um, or solving some classical optimization problem, um, where this adaptive technique can also improve these uh, the quantum uh, ver uh, optimization algorithm. And then finally, I will uh, briefly mention uh, some further improvement of this um, adaptive quantum optimization algorithm. Um, so uh, as I said, um, we want to balance this need for short quantum circuits and the need to build in uh, physical knowledge. Um, so here, uh, people at Virginia Tech propose this adaptive derivative assembled problem tailored um, VQE. Um, so instead of having a fixed gas wave function, it builds up this uh, ansatz layer by layer. At each step, 
the operator is selected from a pool of candidate operators according to the following criteria. So for a given uh, existing state psi, um, we could add an operator um, A, which is selected from the pool. And for that new state, this will be the um, expression for the uh, energy expectation value. And we can uh, take the gradient or the derivative of that with respect to the newly added variational parameter. And you, if you um, evaluate this quantity at a um, point where the newly added parameter is zero, this amounts to measuring the expectation value of the commutator between the target Hamiltonian and the added candidate operator. So to put this in action, first we have this uh, user determined operator pool from which we select our uh, operator to put in our ANSATS. And then uh, if we are just starting the algorithm, we have some initial state. Whereas if we are in the middle of the algorithm, we have the last optimal state. I'll explain what it is um, in a second. Then for each candidate operator in our pool, we'll be able to measure the derivative as we saw uh, on the last slide on the quantum processor. And for each of them, we measure that gradient. Among these, we select the gradient um, that, that has the largest magnitude then we add that operator that corresponds to that uh, largest gradient to our ansatz to form a new ansatz. So, so this is our uh, newly added operator. This is our previous uh, ansatz. Then uh, we have a new ansatz. We can perform the usual uh, variational quantum eigensilver algorithm. So the, the cycle that we saw uh, previously. And then we optimize all the parameters in our current ansatz. Now we reach a new optimal state, which we, we can use to be um, the starting point of our next round of um, ADAPT. Um, so these can be repeated until all the gradients that we measure are small. So let's see how it uh, performs. Um, so this is a um, simulated performance of this algorithm. Um, here, the energy uh, error, which is the difference between the energy found by our algorithm and the energy found by uh, exact diagonalization of the um, uh, chosen uh, orbital basis. Um, so, so the energy error is plotted as a function of the number of variational parameters in our ansatz. And this also translates to how deep our quantum circuit is. Um, both of these curves are our uh, ADAPT VQE um, algorithm with slightly different operator pools. Um, here, uh, the other ones are um, uh, ANSATS constructed with the same uh, type of operators as in our operator pool, but with just random order or some alphabetical order. Um, this blue dot here is the fixed uh, UCCSD ansatz that we have seen. So we can see that to reach a given energy accuracy, this new adaptive version of VQE um, only needs uh, much fewer uh, uh, layers of operations, which means we only need a much shorter quantum circuit. So that's great. However, um, because we still use these candidate operators, which are taken uh, from the, um, the molecular Hamiltonian, and if you translate them to uh, qubit operations, they are still of this complicated form. And that's again, uh, beyond our reach of quantum uh, circuit depth in our current processors. So we need to further improve this which is what we do um, in this work here. Here we modify the update rule slightly. Instead of adding one uh, operator each time, we add multiple operators, as long as they don't touch the same uh, set, set of qubits. So the procedure goes like this. At each step, after we measure all the energy gradients, um, we will uh, rank them from uh, largest to smallest 
Then we go through that list each time, add one uh, operator, which uh, has uh, disjoint support from the um, operators that we have already added. And um, th th this is an illustration of that idea. So uh, in the original uh, version of Adapt VQE, at each layer, we add one operator which would touch different qubits. Whereas in this uh, new version, which we call Tetris Adapt VQE, we add multiple operators. So here, uh, the darker color means that it has a, the operator has a larger gradient. So we can add some other uh, operator that um, is uh, that touches different qubits. So this way, uh, we can add more operators that can be carried out in parallel for each given layer. Um, there's a caveat. So uh, because we need to use this Tetris rule, actually, we also need to op uh, modify the operator pool a little bit. So um, after we uh, map um, the fermionic operations to qubit operations with Jordan Wigner mapping, um, we see it has this long string of Pauli Z operations. And if you want to uh, have different operators that do not touch the same qubits, um, having these long string of Pauli Zs in your operator really is a problem because it would limit um, the next operator that you can select. So uh, more com uh, compatible uh, choices would be uh, qubit pool or qubit excitation based pool. Um, so for a qubit pool, uh, this is constructed by taking the individual uh, Pauli strings uh, from the original uh, uh, version mapped from the fermionic operators and discard these uh, long string of Pauli Z operators. Um, whereas qubit excitation-based pool keeps uh, more of the structure of these operators intact. So it only uh, discards the um, long strings of uh, Pauli Z operators while keeping this uh, structure. Now, this is, um, th this is a plot showing the simulated performance of this uh, Tetris Adapt VQE. Here again, we plot the energy error as a function of uh, both the circuit depth and the number of C0 gates. So these are entangling gates, which are harder to operate than uh, uh, single qubit gates. Uh, now first, let's look at energy error as a function of circuit depth. So here, um, the, these two seeker curves are uh, that. And we can see that to reach a given energy accuracy, this Tetris adapt um, outperforms the original version of adapt. So it needs a shorter circuit to reach the given accuracy. However, if you uh, look at the number of entangling gates present in the circuit, you can see that for a given energy accuracy, these two versions actually uh, behave very uh, similarly. Um, so from this, we can uh, conclude that the, um, the, the improvement in terms of circuit depth actually comes from the fact that we can compress a lot of operations to a single layer. Um, and because for each adapt uh, iteration or adapt step that we saw before, we need to measure all the gradients um, for our uh, Or, or a smaller circuit depth, we would need a smaller number of gradient measurements. So it also improves the algorithm in that sense. And this is uh, the simulated results for different uh, molecules with uh, different bond dimensions. Um, so can, can you still hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, great. Um, and uh, so we can see that for a larger molecule, the um, circuit depth uh, reduction is actually uh, larger. So um, empirically, we are hopeful that this would scale uh, nicely to larger system. Um, now let me uh, switch gear a little bit to uh, classical optimization problems instead of simulating quantum systems. Um, so these are some of the examples and uh, 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 
um, well-studied um, version of quantum optimization algorithm to solve these problems is the so-called quantum approximate optimization algorithm, or in short, QAOA. And uh, I'm going to briefly introduce what it is and then uh, show you how we can use this adaptive uh, technique to improve further this algorithm. So this was first uh, proposed to solve combinatorial problems, for example, max cut problem. Um, and max cut is to find um, a bipartition of some vertices such that the, uh, the cut would go through uh, as many edges as possible if the edges are unweighted, or if the edges are weighted, the cut should go through um, as, a, uh, as uh, larger weights as possible. So I'm showing a, a simplified version of this problem on just four vertices with uh, weighted edges. And you can see this cut will be the max cut solution. Um, and this problem can be mapped to the problem of finding the ground state of an easing Hamiltonian. Um, and the mapping is actually easy. So we can map the um, vertices separated by the cut to uh, spin up and downs. And for uh, an edge connecting to opposite spins, um, we can uh, add a, a penalty or not, not penalty. In this case, we add a, uh, we lower the energy, so we give it a reward. So uh, for a larger uh, weight, we would have a larger reward in our uh, energy. Now, uh, this QAOA um, constructs the variational ansatz um, in an alternating form. So it acts on a reference state, which is the product state of all plus state, um, a series of um, uh, operators and they are uh, they alternate between the exponential of the cost Hamiltonian, which is the Ising Hamiltonian, and the exponential of a mixer operator, which is the summation of uh, Pauli X operators. And these coefficients in front of these operators are the variational parameters in our uh, ansatz. Then one can minimize the expectation value of the cost Hamiltonian, the Ising Hamiltonian, to uh, variationally find the values of these uh, parameters, beta and gamma. Now, um, instead of having that fixed mixer operator, we can make it adaptive the same way that we uh, see for the uh, VQE version. Now, uh, at each step, we take the last optimal state and choose the operator in the same way to build our ansatz. Um, and then the operator can be uh, selected from some candidate pools. For example, we can choose it from uh, a pool of only single qubit operators or a pool that also contains uh, two qubit operators. Um, so note that these two qubit operators will introduce extra entangling operations uh, for our ansatz. So previously with the original QAOA, um, the easing Hamiltonian of the, uh, or the cost Hamiltonian is the only thing that's responsible for generating entanglement, whereas now we have extra operations if we uh, select from this pool. So this is a simulated um, uh, plot. Here the energy error is given as a function of the number of layers. And we can see that with the multi-qubit or two-qubit pool used, adapt QAOA can uh, can reach a given energy accuracy with fewer layers compared to the standard QAOA. Um, and because of uh, that fact um, and uh, the easing Hamiltonian or the cost Hamiltonian uses uh, much more entangling gates compared to the mixer um, operators we are using, um, it actually saves um, the number of uh, entangling operations as well as saving the number of variational parameters. So it's a huge improvement on uh, saving the resource. Uh, now this uh, prompts us to think about the relation between the performance of these quantum optimization algorithm and the role of entanglement. So we know that in this algorithm, the goal is to find 
some classical state. So here entanglement really isn't needed in the final solution. But the question is that whether we would hope that the entanglement present in our ansatz would speed up the convergence. So this problem was looked at um, in the literature from different angles. For example, um, in this work, they saw that uh, uh, when they simulate a quantum system, um, the level of entanglement in the ansatz lies between the final solution uh, level and the level in a random state. Whereas in this uh, work, they saw that a product state ansatz can sometimes outperform and entangle ones. So we look at this problem from our perspective, from the uh, adapt QAOA perspective, where we use the measure um, entanglement entropy across some arbitrary bipartition as our measure of entanglement. Um, so here um, we compare the adapt QAOA with the st standard QAOA on a all to all eight vertex graph with weighted edges. Um, so this is energy error um, as a function of number of layers. Um, all the short lines are uh, performance from different graph instances. So we draw the edges uh, randomly. Um, and the solid lines and the dashed lines are the mean of those graph instances and the um, uh, medium uh, respectively. And we can see that overall, this adaptive version uh, outperforms the original version. But if you look at the entanglement entropy generated by the optimal uh, or optimized ansatz, um, you see that both algorithms can generate more uh, entanglement um, at early stages, but at uh, later stages, only adapt version can uh, decrease the uh, level of entanglement um, fast, whereas the level of entanglement stays relatively high in the original version throughout the algorithm. So we see that more entanglement present in the ansatz does not always coincide with better performance of the algorithm. And next, we compare the performance of adapt QAOA with different operator pools. So here we compare a pool that contains um, two qubit operators um, for all the pairs in our graph or for on, only for the pairs that live on this uh, line. Uh, on, uh, that are only for the nearest neighbors on this line. So unsurprisingly, uh, in terms of energy error, we see that um, with a full pool, with more flexibility in the pool, um, the performance is much better compared to this more restricted pool. And if we look at the uh, entanglement entropy generated by the two versions, we see that the full pool can generate more entanglement at earlier stages, whereas late, uh, at later stages when the solution is convergent to the target solution, both would um, uh, both uh, versions would have a low level of entanglement. So we see that more uh, connected pool would generate more entanglement at early stages, which may be helpful um, at later stages. So uh, in conclusion from this, um, we see that um, ADAPT QAOA is efficient in both generating and removing of entanglement, which isn't present uh, in the original version. Whereas uh, we also conclude that it's not the amount of entanglement that helps with the uh, speed up. It's rather the flexible entangling operations um, that are favorable in these uh, optimization algorithm. Um, now, uh, I would like to, um, mentioned this uh, work in preparation, which is a further improvement of this adaptive version of uh, QAOA. Um, the idea is that, um, so as we saw um, from uh, this uh, spectrum of performance, we see that um, adapt QAOA may not find, may not always find the true ground state. Sometimes it gets close to the one of the excited states. And we would like to make it more robust. We would like to make the classical optimization uh, better. So there is an approach used for the original version, which is to um, warm start it. 
meaning that you take a classically inspired solution as the starting point for your quantum uh, uh, optimization algorithm. Um, so it's uh, this approach is given in these two works where the idea is that in the original max cut, remember we're uh, separating the vertices into uh, spin up and down, or you can label them as plus one and minus one, or you can uh, interpret this as uh, finding a point on a, a zero dimensional sphere or a sphere embedded in one dimensional uh, space. Um, so this is the original problem, which is hard to solve classically. Um, we can relax this problem to the problem of uh, minimizing uh, a counterpart of the cost function, um, which is given as a function of uh, vectors which live on uh, a m minus one dimensional sphere or uh, a sphere embedded in n dimensional uh, space. So this problem is a semi-definite program, which means it's easy to find the global uh, minimum. However, this is far from the original problem that we are trying to solve. Um, there, there are classical ways to uh, start from this version and find a, an approximate solution, which I uh, won't go into detail about. But the quantum uh, um, so, uh, method proposed by these works is that you start somewhere in between. You relax the original problem slightly um, to uh, k equals two and three order, meaning you uh, put your vector on a one-dimensional sphere or a two-dimensional sphere. And then you uh, find the classical solution. You interpret them as uh, vectors living on the block sphere. So that would map it to a quantum state, which you would then use as the starting state or initial state of the quantum approximate um, optimization algorithm. So we use the same approach in our adaptive version as well. So remember previously, we are starting from the tensor product of all plus state. So which would look like these vectors on the uh, block sphere. Now uh, we first use this uh, relaxed version of problem and then we find a classical solution to that. So this would correspond to a series of vectors. Now we put them on block sphere, which would be a product state of quantum states. Now we take this as the initial um, state for our algorithm and we simulate the performance. So these are for different graphs, but overall we can see that this uh, new uh, warm start version of ADAPT QAOA would outperform our original uh, uh, version of uh, adaptive uh, quantum uh, opt optimization algorithm. So with that, I'd like to summarize. Um, I show that um, we have this adaptive technique which would improve the variational uh, ansatz uh, in the sense that it only needs a more compact circuit to reach a given energy accuracy. Um, and then I show that uh, we can further improve this um, algorithm by taking this Tetris rule, where we add more operators um, at each given adapt step. And then I show that this uh, adaptive technique can be applied to uh, uh, solving classical optimization problem um, which would outperform the original uh, version of uh, quantum optimization algorithm. And it is efficient in both generating and removing uh, entanglement present in our ansatz. Um, and then I show that uh, we can further improve the performance of this adaptive version of quantum optimization algorithm by starting with a classically inspired initial state. But that's actually not the full story here. Um, so as we see that um, the ADAPT um, VQE would uh, rely on the pool construction before we even start this algorithm. Um, so uh, we can try to build in information about our problem into the pool construction, or we can uh, build in the knowledge about our hardware. For example, you can put in some uh, more native operations to your uh, processor to the pool. Um, another idea is that we can uh, build in the information about the symmetry present in our problem to the pool. Um, 
and we can consider the uh, applying these adaptive VQE to different applications. For example, simulating condensed matter uh, systems, um, uh, which would be different from uh, molecular simulations, because there you have some notion of locality. So in in a molecule, you might have interactions uh, between different orbitals between arbitrary uh, orbitals, whereas in condensed matter system, you would have uh, interaction only uh, between um, nearest neighbors or next nearest neighbor um, sites. Um, also, it's crucial to look at um, the limitations or improvement about this uh, quantum uh, approximate optimization algorithm where uh, this adaptive approach would um, help, might help with um, uh, tackling uh, problems with different levels of computational uh, difficulty. Um, and with all the improvements, um, we might be able to uh, actually uh, deploy these algorithms on real processors. However, uh, at present with um, numerical simulation, we actually see that to, uh, to reach the required uh, chemical accuracy, um, we would need a noise level that's so low that's below the error correction threshold. So in order for these algorithms to perform well and without the help of error correction, we would need uh, techniques such as error mitigation. And we're currently working on how to combine those techniques with these algorithms. So with that, I'd like to acknowledge my collaborators and also thank you for your attention. And I'm happy to take questions. Thank you, uh, Yanzu. That was a wonderful talk. And it's really promising results that you showed. Uh, we have a couple of questions on the chat and I'll read out to them, I'll read out to you. Um, so on slide seven, uh, there's a question on how do you measure the derivative? Uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So uh, here, for each given, um, for each uh, possible candidate operator in the pool, um, the derivative is actually given by the expectation value of this commutator. So because we know the problem Hamiltonian, we know what candidate operators we put in the pool, we can calculate these. Um, this operator, which is the commutator, and then directly we just measure it on the processor, on quantum processor. Yeah. Yes, that answers that. Uh, next question is, how nice robust is adaptive VQE ANSAT? How long does it take to run a cycle on the IBM backend since we are adding gates after each update? I guess you mentioned something about that in the last slide as well. Uh, yeah. Well, um, I don't have a number for the uh, clock time, uh, but you could imagine uh, for whatever time you need for some operator measurement, for some observable measurement, um, it just scales uh, linearly to how many um, operators you have in the pool. So one thing crucial to uh, pool construction is to reduce the number of operators in the pool. Um, so in in one of the works. Um, so in actually in, in this work here, um, uh, I am not involved in that work, but uh, it's from our group. So the authors have looked at um, the so-called minimal complete pool, which would be a pool that um, contains the least number of operators that would in principle give you arbitrary um, operations that, that can take you to arbitrary states within the Hilbert space you are looking at. Um, however, the caveat is that although in principle it might give you that, um, you are not sure that with adapt um, algorithm it would lead you to that operation because this is still a heuristic algorithm. Yeah. So that that's also answers the next question, like how is the operator pool uh, chosen? So you can yeah. also look at it's this a, paper. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's an active um, research direction in our group. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there's another question like, is uh, Tetris Adapt VQE or Adapt VQ, uh, sorry, QAOA, uh, is that available as a package that someone might want to explore and 
uh, do some hands-on work with it? Uh, yes, I believe at least the more uh, the published uh, papers, their versions of the code are available from uh, our group's um, GitHub page. Um, I believe it should be it should be included in these papers. So this is the very first um, ADAPT um, paper, uh, but th there are variations of that which are forked from the uh, very first version of the code. You, you can find it on GitHub, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think that's the last question. We have one more. Uh, can ADAPT QAOA be used for optimizing problems in quantum machine learning? Uh, because one of the biggest problems here is that since the circuit depth is very large, it takes a long time to update the parameters. Uh, have you done something like this study before? Yeah, it's a great question. I haven't done anything, but we are currently actually looking at um, applying this adaptive technique in the context of uh, quantum machine learning. Because, uh, well, the, the first example that we have in mind is looking at, say, uh, like supervised learning where you just want to find a set of labels and minimize that cross entropy, like in classical machine learning. The slight difference is that here, the goal is that we want to find a particular state, like the ground state of a molecule. Whereas there you want to find a, a function, a complicated function, which would map your input to the output. So there you would want the, the circuit to be I would say more expressive than our version of adaptive VQE. So that brings some difficulty and we're currently looking at this problem. Great question, thanks. Okay, and is there also like a close from expression for the measurement or do you directly experiment and uh, measure on the device? So the closed form would just be the usual, you know, matrix multiplication, uh, The how, how you write out the, um, uh, expectation value of an observable. Uh, but the thing is that you don't want to classically calculate that uh, matrix multiplication. You would like to measure that on the quantum processor, which would provide, hopefully, quantum advantage to the problem, yeah. Yeah, and so we have one more question coming in. Uh, noise is always a problem in quantum computing, but maybe we can develop algorithm where noise plays our game. Uh, so can we develop optimization algorithm that use noise as a favor, as in using noise to do uh, like useful computation? Yeah, I. so that's a great question. And I believe people, not just our group, people have been working on this. Um, it's not clear to me how it should be done, um, but I believe there, there's a paper from the Chicago, I think Liang Jiang's group, that they found in the context of machine learning, I believe quantum machine learning, um, sometimes when you have a certain level of noise, it might make your optimization more robust to local minima. Um, but I, I'm not quite sure how that would apply uh, in our setting. Um, yeah, great question. Yes, yeah, something I guess... similar, I guess, was done in circuit compiling where you can right. uh, put random gates and that's going to give you better results, uh, better fidelity. Yeah, yeah, I guess intuitively here, you can think of this as, you know, if you're trapped in some, if you are following exact um, measurement, if you are trapped in some local uh, minimum, then, then then you can't really do much. Whereas if you have some sort of noise, it might help to kick the solution out of the local minima. I guess that's the intuition behind this. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thanks for answering all the questions. There's a lot of wishes for your talks uh, as well. Uh, it was a fan fantastic talk. Thank you.